everyone and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to thank you guys for being patient while my mouth recovered. <laughs> it looks like I'm gonna have a bit of a scar, which is exactly what I want um, on my face. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for being patient. And now that I can speak properly, I can finally give you my August wrap up. Um, and it was it was it was a good month. I mean, I've I had a lot of fun with this month. Um, so the the first book I uh, I finished was The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, and I did a really really silly video um, where it's it's called Bedtime Rambles or something like that, where I was in the pitch darkness and I just couldn't stop mouthing my excitement for this book. So I think I was about like 200 pages into the book, and I just it it's just so fantastic. It's so so good this book. It's it's the perfect book that creates tension and suspense, but mix mixes in like really delightful characters with who all have very unique perspectives and unique personalities, and it's just really really fantastic. This book is so so good. Um, it, it it's basically it, it's called a sensation novel, um, where our main character, uh, one night he encounters this mysterious woman in night. So just this woman who in the middle of the night asks for his help and she admits to him that she has um, escaped an asylum. And he helps her get to London upon which they, they separate, but not before he is um, told that she has this very particular connection to where he's going next and basically the rest of the of the story just follows his connection with this woman in night woman in white and her connection to his life moving forward and there's there there, there there's paranoia there are villains there are good people there are mysterious connections mysterious pasts and it's just so much fun. It's so it, it's just so good. And I was just I absolutely love this. I was entranced from the very beginning until the very very end. And all I could think about when I was at work or you know anywhere else, all I could think about is wanting to go home and read this book. So this is it was so so good. It was so fantastic. And it's just one of those books you can just enjoy the ride. You know, just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the 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 reading. The, the reading experience because the thing that's really interesting about this book is that the the book basically tells the story from the perspective of each character or almost each character in terms of like documentation so it, it's really fantastic because each character can give their detailed experience of a certain um, event uh, a, a certain um, occurrence and with so with that you you get the you get the full story without getting the full story because there's always something in the background and Wilkie Collins is so good about introducing like a slight hint at something and you're like oh I want to know more about that and then he switches the narrative over to another character who's able to elaborate on that but then when when that character shows up they also have something in the background that's going on so you have to wait like with really really great anticipation until you get to the next character and then they reveal more about the story so it's really really so much fun and all i could think about is like how this was released over the span of two two years um because it was originally released in a serialization and this would have been so much fun to read at the time i can only imagine you know myself like waiting every like few weeks to oh my gosh what's gonna happen what's gonna happen because that's how i felt at the time of reading um i just i just could not stop thinking okay what's gonna happen next uh what's gonna be revealed next um what are we gonna be told and it was just so so much fun this book and there there's it's just really amazing how wilkie collins was really able to create these super individual characters that have their own humor their own manner of speaking, um, their own uh, uh, personalities full of wit and charm, but always with something sort of in the background that's sort of looming. And it, it makes you question everybody. It makes you question, um, you know, who's telling the truth and, and um, who's lying. Is there paranoia? Is there 
Um, yeah, it's just, this book was fantastic, super, super recommended, so easy to read, so, I mean, it's a thriller, and it's, it's, it's so gripping, it's so, so good, this was amazing, I really, really love this, I'm so happy I read it, um, amazing, 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 and someone, you know who you are, um, picked up the book based off of, um, my previous um, video and they said they loved it so you see it's it's universal it's just you're going to love this book um, so next I ended up finishing volume 4 of the story of the stone by Kao Shui Kin. I know by now you guys are like just give us tell us what's gonna happen but I still have volume 5 I really thought I was gonna finish this in August because all of a sudden volume 4 the font got significantly bigger and the margins got wider too. So I read this like really, really quickly. In just a few days, I was able to read this. So I was like, all right, all right, I'm gonna pick up volume five, I'm gonna start reading it, and I'll finally be done with this book. Not not that I'm in a hurry, but like, you know, it, it'll be good to finish this book. But then volume five, again, goes back to the very small font and then the smaller margins, and it's a lot longer. So I, have, so I was like, oh gosh, okay, maybe not. So I haven't started volume five. I'm not gonna read it this month. Um, maybe October, I'll end up reading it. It feels like kind of like a November finish, actually, to be honest. But we'll see if I can't do it in, in October. We'll see where the mood takes me. Um, but yeah, it was this volume four was interesting. I have a lot to say, especially since the translator changed all of a sudden. And there's no mention of the, of the translator changing, which I find very strange. Um, so I'm, I don't really understand it. I don't understand if maybe this is like they did just actually translate tra tra change translators in the middle of um of this project or maybe this is like an older maybe like several volumes out there in the in in the you know book distributing world store still are a previous translate i have no idea i don't understand it um but there were a few things that were a little bit jarring because the style sh switched um but yeah so I, ha I do have stuff to say about this but once again i'm gonna wait until i finish the whole book in whole um, as a whole and then um, we'll see where I go from there but yeah finish volume four very excited to finish the final volume five and um, to give you guys my final thoughts when that happens the next book I read was winter in the blood by Jane James Welch so if you haven't noticed yet these are all penguin classic books that I've read this month basically what happened is that um, I had that Penguin Classics TBR pile, and then I had um, another video where I hauled some Penguin Classics, and you guys all started reading the books before me, so, <laughs> and, we, and everyone was like, oh, thank you for recommending this book, it's so fantastic, and I'm like, oh, that's really good, I'm so happy for you. I haven't read it myself, but I'm very happy for you. Um, so I decided, enough is enough, you know, I need to read these myself, you know, I hauled them for myself, and I'm very happy you're enjoying these books. But I want to read them myself. So yeah, all the books in this video are Penguin Classic, um, Penguin Classics because I'm going through my own TBR. But yeah, I picked up Winter in the Welch, <laughs> Winter in the Blood by James Welch, which follows our um, our protagonist who lives on a Native American uh, reservation. And gosh, I mean, I've been away from the U.S. now. I don't think Native the word Native American is even liked these days i don't know there's there's another word i feel like i've 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 heard recently um but yeah he's he's of um he lives on a reservation in montana and basically just goes through his life at this at this current moment and i have mixed feelings about this book um i dislike i very much disliked the first part I got into the second part and I started to get into it a little bit more, but I was still a little vague about my feelings about the book. And in the third part, I enjoy I definitely enjoyed it more towards the end. But I don't know if I really enjoyed this as a whole, this book. I it I don't know what it is. It's just there there there's a there's a style of writing about it. I don't I don't know if it's the the, the story itself, the 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 characters who aren't very you aren't very attractive characters, you know, to 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 tell you the truth. Um, 
it, it, it's it's almost it's not so much unlikable characters but there's just really a quality about them that I just didn't get along with and so because of that I didn't really get along with the book as a whole and you know the 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 sections about you know drinking and and uh, sleeping with women and I don't know there's just there was I I just felt very detached by that. There are some very beautiful moments in this book. There are some very poignant moments um, that were very beautifully described. And I think I liked the atmosphere of the book. So I think I liked the, the setting of the book. I liked the environment. I just didn't like the characters in that environment um, is what I think I'd have to conclude. So while I do think this book is still <clears throat> worth reading, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very short book. It, it, it comes out to 135 pages. Um, while I think the book is worthwhile reading, I don't know if it's exactly pleasurable reading, I would say. So, um, Winter in the Blood, I really wanted to like this. I did think it was going to be like, a five star you know prediction five star type of book <clears throat> and um, unfortunately that wasn't really the case for me there, there was a there was a disconnect with uh, between myself and the book um, but I do think there's a, a, a reader for this so then um, I read uh, the nonfiction why we can't wait by Martin Luther King jr. which talks about um, basically the civil rights mo moment um, he describes how it came to be and more importantly he describes why it had to come to be what it was um, and it's 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 basically him giving this narrative about sort of the timeline the reasons the people that had to get involved while also being very thankful and thanking the people who were involved um, it also has him um, including letters that he sent to certain uh, figures to persuade them why it was very much necessary that they participate in this movement and it was it's truly a fine fine uh, book and I'm very happy I mean Martin Luther King Jr. is is a remarkable remarkable writer I mean it, I mean his writing is absolutely beautiful his his use use of words to really per, like just the way he meant it's not a manipulation of the words but just yeah it's just his use of words to be able to so proudly and so intellectually be able to to state what he needs to say much better than i'm doing right now um it's just it's 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 exquisite he's very very much he's such an intelligent man it's really it's it's amazing um and there's so much, I mean, there's so much he, about this. I mean, all, all, the, all the famous ideas about, you, you know, the, the, how you know, black Americans need to come together and f be a part of this movement, whether or not you're, you're part of the, the, the black, uh, not, not the black, uh, whether you're part of the poor community or you're more of an upper class, um, uh, member of society because he he keeps saying that because uh, some uh, some black Americans have become part of the higher echelons of society the very few um, to sort of maintain a veneer this veneer of like proper society and then oh we can participate in proper society so to do that they kind of pretend to be white almost or they really play up the whiteness of their personality to be able to you know keep this image of yes we we we, we belong in the um we properly belong in the upper echelons of society but the thing is that, that that doesn't really help all blacks and it it diminishes the 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 black the blackness of black americans basically and so he goes into that and then he goes into the idea of you know white americans either you know stating that they are for this civil rights movement but they're not actually helping so he talks about the neutrality 
uh, the dangers of being neutral. So all those ideas are very, very much um, explained in this. And I mean, this is a book, I mean, you could highlight pretty much every other paragraph. It, there's so much in it. Um, and the thing that was really most fascinating for me and the thing that I really took out of it was comparing this, which took place in 1963, and comparing that to our current uh, situation right now in, in, in the United States and seeing what has changed, what hasn't changed, how he, we could use the exact same words that he uses in the book and just use them um, right now. And I think it'd be very, it would have been so interesting to see what he would thought about the current progress which is also marred by a lack of progress. Um, so really, really fascinating. And there's this, there's one paragraph that I really, really liked because it, it's such, it, it's so fitting for so many things going on right now. And it's just, it, I mean, it's really amazing how his words could be used for any sort of social justice movement. Um, but I wanted to sort of, um, read uh, this passage because I thought it's 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 so poignant it's so poignant um, so I'm reading from page 98 of this book and it starts as such an attitude stems from a tragic misconception of time from this strangely irrational notion that there is something in the very flow of time that will inevitably cure all ills actually time itself is neutral it can be used either destructively or constructively. More and more, I feel that the people of ill will have used time much more effectively than have the people of goodwill. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. Human progress never rolls, never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of men willing to be co-workers with God, and without this hard work, a time itself becomes an alley of the forces of social stagnation. So I thought that was very, very remarkable. I mean, I I can get rid of the parts with God, but um, I just, that, that says so much about, so, that says so much about so much in a current, in a current generation. And the thing is like really, I mean, you could highlight, like I said, every other paragraph in this book, um, because it's absolutely fascinating. He just has, there's an aura behind his writing and behind, you know, the man himself that is just, it's, it's, you need, you need to read it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, definitely a book that you can reread many, many times and get something out of it every single time. It was ugh, it's so absolutely fascinating. I mean, I, 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 I hate the fact that I didn't take notes, but the thing is that again i'd be i would be constantly have a pen to paper and i think i just needed to feel it i need to feel his words the very first time around and then maybe the next time i read this i can start taking notes um but i just i envy his eloquence um his ability to really motivate and inspire people the, the way that because he had to do that he had to persuade so many people that this was the right thing to do. Even people who believed it was the right thing to do, he still had to persuade them that because it was the right thing to do, now was the time that you actually need to act upon it. And it's definitely something I'm guilty of. Um, I'm definitely a supporter of all these movements, but I, I definitely have um, a tendency to to be afraid of, you know, movement, you know? So um, it's definitely, a very convincing argument that you know it's it's not good enough to just agree with you know that everything has to be better and we should I go to this ideal society it's very easy to to say and believe those things but it's very much um, a, a different there's something different you you have to do something different to actually be able to uh, take these ideas and uh, bring them into a positive uh, movement basically so really this was absolutely fantastic super happy to have read it and then the last book that i read was the post humor the post humus memoirs the <laughs> the post humus memoirs of bras cubas by machado de asis um and this was amazing this is 
this is the type of book that I absolutely love. This this is a me book in all of its in all of its essence. This is absolutely fantastic. It's um basically just this, this man who has passed away at the the proper age of, you know, you know, late 60s. And he gives the story of his life and he's he's a strangely a quite mediocre man but who was able to do things in not actually so bad of a way but at the same time he's a very charitable man but he doesn't want to be charitable he's just he's a man full of hypocrisy he's a man full of a doubt a man lacking any sort of path of motivation and yet at the same time he has all those things and it's really it's really so interesting but yeah it just documents his life and his love his love affair um that spanned the entire duration of his life and it's full of humor and these little witticisms and uh play on words and i read uh this version which is a new translation um by the translator what is his name it's definitely in the book let me find it. Oh my goodness. Where is his... Where is his name? Like, he doesn't even sign his own forward with his name. I don't understand it. I know I read it in this book. Here we go. Oh, is it a... It's a woman, I think. Woman? Yeah, it's a woman. Sorry. Um, Flora Thompson Duvu. Um, yeah, so she, apologies, I thought it was a man, I, I got confused with the, 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 the forward writer, Dave Eggers, but yeah, the, the translator is Flora Thompson Duvu, and she did this absolutely amazing translation, and the thing that's really so good about that, about this book, is that she includes these endnotes where she talks about her not only when there's a reference um, that needs clarification for the non-Brazilian uh, uh, reader, also for uh, even for Brazilian readers, but the reader who's not of this time period, there are references, uh, maybe like explanations of like you know currency and where certain locations are and uh, what cities they are now in uh, modern Brazil. But she includes these notes on like translation choices. That is really really fascinating so for me being a french and spanish speaker it really helps you know portuguese is quite 